Uh, good evening. Welcome to the January 9th meeting, regular meeting of the Town Council. You all please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America and, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Can we have the roll call, please. Chairman Garvin? Here. Councilor Grennan? Here. Councilor Caitlin Jordan? Councilor Penelope Jordan? Here. Councilor Lennon? Here. Councilor Ray? Here. And Councilor Sullivan? Here. Could we have, uh, any, are there any councilors that have reports or correspondence that they'd like to share? Councilor Grenning? Um, th um, thanks, Jimmy. Yeah, I just want to announce that the uh, new appointments um, selected uh, ordinance committee will meet for the first time this coming year on Tuesday, this next Tuesday, on uh, January the 17th um, from 12 to 1.30. And um, you can find the supporting documents and agenda on uh, the town website. Thank you very much. Any other reports or correspondence, Jessica? I, yeah, I just wanted to, to mention, I, I just noticed, I didn't see it on the agenda, but I do believe we're entering into executive session. So we should notice the public that we're entering into that this evening. Sure, thank you very much. Um, yeah, at the conclusion of our regular agenda tonight, we will be adjourning into, or not adjourning, but as you said, entering into executive session um, to discuss personnel issue or matter. Um, so. Thank you very much. Um, any other reports or correspondence? Okay, seeing none. Uh, Council Sullivan, do you have the Finance Committee report you want to share? Yes, I do. Thank you. Um, you all have in front of you a color-coded uh, financial dashboard. It's also in the packet on the town website for folks at home. Uh, this is a dashboard reflecting from July 1st, 2016 to December uh, 30th, 2016. I want to thank Catherine Mesmer and uh, Deb Lane for helping put this together. But um, this gives you a look at a glance on one page of where we are. Um, <clears throat> there are a couple interesting variances um, that I would like to point out. Um, we're, we're below our uh, budgeted amount on public works were above a little bit on police overtime. I would imagine someone was going to ask about that, but they've had a couple injuries and people out sick, so that explains that. Um, our debt service is a little lower than you might expect, but that is a result of uh, timing with our bond payments. Uh, so, as it stands now, our total debt status is $16,018,993. Um, we have received the money for the, the uh, uh, recycling center, so that's in the bank, and that'll be, work on that will be progressing this, this later on this spring. Any questions? Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, like the format a lot, uh, very easy to follow, and Appreciate you walking us through it. Thank you. Thanks. Um, next up, uh, citizen opportunity for discussion of items not on the agenda. I see no citizens here, so we will move beyond that. Next after that, the town manager's monthly report. Interim manager Lane. Thank you very much. I do have a, a couple of things uh, that you folks might be interested in. First, I wanted to note the passing of Thomas Nee. He was our tree warden um, for 12 years from 1998 to 2010. Um, Tom worked for several tree and arborist companies. He also was the superintendent of the Calvary Cemetery in the mid-70s for 20 years. Uh, thereafter, his son uh, took over that position. Um, when I learned of Thomas's passing, Bob Malley and I were kind of talking, and, and Bob said that Tom was a super nice guy, extremely knowledgeable, and, and Bob enjoyed going out in the field uh, to look at uh, issues and concerns with Tom. So um, while I was reading uh, the obituary, I also noticed that uh, Tom's son, uh, Dickie, um, passed away a day before Tom did. Mm -hmm. So very sad, certainly, uh, for the family. So we wanted to send out our thoughts uh, to the family. So um, 
I wanted to share that with you folks um, this evening. Um, just a couple other uh, quick things. If you folks remember a couple of years ago, we went to a single stream uh, model at the bottle shed for uh, the bottles and cans that recycling. And just wanted to update you that we've had two distributions um, of funding in a total of $35,200 that have been distributed to the different fundraising groups here in town uh, benefiting the youth. Um, the program started in 1992, and if you bring that forward to date, approximately $617,000 has come from that bottle shed that's been distributed throughout the years. So, tremendous effort. So we thank the community for continuing to drop off their bottles and cans, and we can encourage them to continue to do so. And the last thing I just wanted to update you on is I was recently contacted from the city of South Portland. Uh, you may have noted that their longtime code enforcement officer, Pat Doucette, is retiring in a uh, few weeks after 35 years of service. And the city is um, going through the hiring process, and they asked for our help uh, with Ben McDougall. Uh, as they transition uh, to their new staff person. Uh, you may remember about five and a half years ago, for a three-month period, the City of South Portland assisted us when we were transitioning between codes officers. So um, we certainly talked to Ben, and, and he was in agreement and very pleased to help our neighbors as they helped us five and a half years ago. So. We expect this to start the end of January for a few weeks, and again, it will depend on their hiring process. So I just wanted to make you aware, aware of that. We certainly thank Ben for his willingness to split his time between South Portland uh, and us. And again, it's just nice that we're able, even five and a half years later, to give back uh, to our neighboring community that helped us out when we needed it. So just wanted to update you on that, make you aware of that. Great. Thank you very Thank much. You. Appreciate that. Any questions for the manager? No. Okay. Uh, next up is a review of the draft minutes of the <coughs> December 12th, 2016 meeting. Is there a motion to approve the minutes? Jessica? I move that we approve the minutes of the December 12th, uh, 2016 uh, minutes, meeting minutes. Is there a second? A second. Any? All those in, uh, any discussion? Sorry. Seeing none, all those in favor? Great. Next up, we have a uh, public hearing scheduled for the proposed changes to the sign ordinance. Um, I don't see anybody here from the public. Uh, so seeing nobody here, we will open and close that public hearing. So next up is item number 39-2017, public hearing on the complete streets draft policy. Also seeing nobody here from the public for that item, I will open. Um, you have a question, do we sir? have to decide what to do about next with the sign ordinance and this and this complete streets after? Or are we strictly having the public hearing and moving on? Um, I was going to open and close it. Oh, and then talk. Okay. Entertain a motion on either one of those items. Okay. So, seeing no people from the public here, I'll open and close that public hearing as well. So, is anybody looking to make a motion on either one of those items? Jessica? I move that we accept the proposed changes to the sign ordinance. Is there a second? Patty? I'll second that. Any discussion? Caitlin? Um, I would request that we, I guess, table it and, and give the public one more month, I guess, to comment and vote to pass it at our next meeting. Is there other discussion? Jessica? Yeah, I, I, I really don't understand that. I think that you know this has been well noticed, and we usually don't have several public hearings if the public didn't come. Oh, I understand the public didn't come, and that seems to be our ongoing struggle: is we don't hear from the public until sometimes it's too late. And this is one of the things that I was working on with Mike before he retired: was generating a policy that we would have public hearings and then wait a meeting before we past ordinances or you know major rule changes we we were in the middle of drafting that language and so since we didn't hear from the public i would hate to pass an ordinance change tonight and the public not be have been fully informed or aware <coughs> just i don't see what the harm is in in giving one more month of a snippet to be put in the courier or 
whatever to hear from the public. But if I'm in the minority, then it still passes. So. Other discussion? Sarah? Um, I'm just proposing a compromise. Perhaps we don't have to schedule another public hearing, but um, it, it tends to be our policy to wait a month after a public hearing to vote, so we could completely legitimately wait till next month to actually vote to accept this, and that would give the public a month to uh, email or um, call us or attend the next ordinance committee meeting and comment or what, what have you. Patty? I guess I would just um, say that I think that, with all due respect to the process, I think generally the public and the people kind of drive some of those feelings of, of waiting. I think we did hear from a business owner today, Jay Cox, who's somebody who really does follow what's going on and how it affects small businesses around, and he said it was the most well-written, and kudos to you, Caitlin, and to the committee, um, you know, changes in the site ordinance, and he was very uh, worried about it. So I feel like there, we did get some input. It's, um, there was being, it was noticed, and I, I feel like we should just move forward. I don't feel like we need to leave this one hanging, personally. Jessica? I agree. I was going to say the same thing. Um, we all received that a letter from Mr. Cox, who attended several ordinance meetings. I mean, we discussed this over the, the signed ordinance over a, a, a good lengthy process this fall. And again, we have heard from a member of the public who attended some of those meetings. So I, I don't see any reason to wait. Penny? Um, the way that I look at the, um, the proposed sign ordinance is that uh, within that, it appears that there's grandfathering. And so uh, people who are currently have uh, uh, businesses or whatever, they aren't going to be immediately impacted. The people who are going to be impacted are future uh, businesses or citizens or whoever decides to erect signs. Um, I, as I read the ordinance and seeing that there's uh, not a, a presence of citizens here. I, I didn't have a problem moving it forward uh, because it seems like the due diligence was done. Kathy? Um, I agree uh, what's, <clears throat> with what's been said. I, I see no reason to um, postpone voting on it. Um, we have a lot of, on our plate usually and um, the, the more that we can get done and, I, I, you know, reading through the sign ordinance, it was very complex but obviously very well done and a lot of work was done on it. Um, we did hear from members of the public and I guess if anybody had some additional concerns, they would have been here this evening and maybe present something that hadn't been thought of and we should consider, but I have no problem voting on that tonight. Any other discussion? Um, Caitlin, I, I am in agreement with you and I support the work that you're, you were doing with Mike and continue to um, seek to pursue that uh, on, on a more wholesale basis we revisit our policies around voting um, uh, immediately following a public hearing. I also agree with the rest of the council uh, as well that I think we've had ample time to hear on this particular item and until such time as we make those changes formally I don't see any reason to hold this up for tonight. So unless there's any other discussion um, we, Are we ready to vote? Mm -hmm. All those in favor of accepting the proposed changes to the sign ordinance? Opposed? Okay Is there any other motion on the public uh, on the item relating to the complete streets draft policy? <coughs> Kathy? I move that we um, approve the complete streets policy, the draft policy, make it a real policy. <laughs> um, and um, obviously there's also a, a piece to that which allows um, our town planner to um, plan with some of the um, surrounding towns and potentially get us some additional money. So I think it's important that we do that this evening. Great. Uh, is there a second? Patty? Yeah. Discussion? Sarah. With apologies that I was not able to make the um, information session that Maureen conducted. I have a few questions for Maureen. Can I ask her? Please, Maureen, would you mind coming up to the lectern? <clears throat> so my overall question is um, <clears throat> that a lot of this language um, 
seems to be a much greater, much greater um, changes and needs than would fit our sort of small village. Um, I, I won't read them all to you because you guys have read them, but there's traffic lights, there's, there's widened roads, there's turning lanes, there's, there's bus shelters, et cetera, et cetera. Um, in other words, a lot of very expensive infrastructure that we won't need. So I guess my question is, what, what is the practical uh, implementation or responsibility in, in, in accepting and voting for this? Well, it's a policy, so you're not held to it, but the, the main benefit of having this is it really kind of creates an automatic step that you always think about whenever you're doing road improvements. And at the briefing we had, uh, we were fortunate that Bob Malley, the public works director, could be there. And I found it very, very beneficial to hear some of his comments because most of your road projects are supervised by Bob or managed by Bob. And he gave a lot of examples of how this type of idea is already being used. So what this is really doing is putting in writing what has already been a common practice, which is to think about not just cars on the road, but pedestrians and bicycles and folks that have physical handicaps, and to always t take that filter for all of your road projects to make sure you're taking advantage of opportunities to make the roads safe for everyone. So just a hypothetical a committee gets formed and um, you know, the tra I'm just using this as an example. The traffic light in the center comes up, and there's a lot of disagreement. What, how much teeth is this that some m member or majority of the committee says, well, it's, we, we, the council in you know 2017 adopted this policy, ergo we have to do the following five things when the majority of citizens do not want that. What, what's, what's the escape hatch? Well, I believe it was Councillor Penny Jordan that asked the same question at the briefing. And That's I why we sit next to, to each other. <laughs> uh, item three, which is exceptions. Right. And if you look at the draft policy, it has a list of specific examples where you could have an opt out of any particular type of facility that you are going to be installing. So there's nothing here that commits you to doing one set design for all streets. What it, what it commits you to doing is to think about all the users whenever you're doing a road project. Thank you. So it's more of a like philosophical overview and roadmap direction than it is a binding plan that we are in some way co compelled to follow if we vote for this. Because I think that would be not responsible to do. Is that a question or statement? It was a state. It was a question slash statement. Okay. <laughs> Are there any other questions for Maureen while we have her here, Jessica? I don't have a question, but I wanted to thank her for our briefing because at our last council meeting, I had asked for that, um, uh, feeling a little overwhelmed at the time with the information. But the briefing was was wonderful, and um, I think it's terrific policy. It's going to help us financially. Um, connect with sidewalks and improve pedestrian and walkability as, weather, as well as other forms of transportation, such as bicycles. And uh, so anyway, I just wanted to thank Maureen for setting this up, that up for us. Um, it was very, very informative. And so I'm very comfortable to support this. Any other discussion? Yeah, I echo that. Thank you very much, Maureen. It was a great um, session. Um, you may just want to get the deck that she had from it, too, because it was, um, I think, addresses a lot of the things you were talking about. And specifically, there's, you know, some great visual examples that are things that obviously don't apply to a town like ours, but where this policy still provides guidance and, and sort of um, direction for. So anyway, if there's no other further discussion, all those in favor of adopting the policy? Complete streets policy. Opposed? Thank you. Next item, number 40 2017, uh, 75 Ocean House Road. Uh, it is recommended, and the code enforcement officer just arrived, um, that we uh, declare this building to be unsafe. So, Ben, do you want to step up and give us a little overview? Good evening, Ben McDougall, code enforcement officer. Uh, I'm not sure if anybody's looked at 75 Ocean House Road when they drive by, but it, uh, 
it is a dilapidated house and unfortunate situation. It, uh, it, it hasn't been maintained for, I'm not sure how long, maybe 10 years. Uh, an older gentleman was uh, removed from the house in 2011. And at that point, you know, we have a report in the file on the house. It was, the house was in very bad condition in 2011 and it's just continued to go downhill since the uh there's a section of the house on the side that's collapsing the front porch is collapsing and uh it's i've talked to uh mortgage companies a lot and maintenance companies that have been responsible for the house and i haven't been able to get them doing anything just working one-on-one -on -one with them so this is uh this is the appropriate step for the town to take this is, uh, I think, this, this is what this state law is designed for, to allow towns to take this step when necessary. That said, I have had better discussions with the mortgage company just over the past couple weeks. So it, it is still my hope that we don't see this process through, that the mortgage company remedies this issue on their own. But taking this step tonight will help them do that. Any questions for me? I, I do have a question. Um, so what is the process? So after we, if we were to take this step, what's the process? What happens to the property and the structure? Does it get dismantled somehow? Or does it still sit there and deteriorate? And who's accountable for taking those actions? Well, if, if the process plays out, the the town will take bids and demolish the house and make okay. it a just a safe flat piece of land if the process plays out fully okay okay are there questions great thanks for that overview uh is there a motion on the issue jessica uh I move that we approve the code of enforcement officers' efforts to pursue legal means to remedy the situation at 75 Ocean House Road and refer the matter to the town's attorney. Second. Sarah? Discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Next item, number 41-2017. This item is to revise our council meeting schedule and budget schedule um, for 2017 based on a few uh, tweaks. Deb, do you want to give a quick overview? Sure. Thank you very much. Uh, when you folks uh, a few weeks ago looked at your budget schedule, um, one of the dates that was not filled in was a citizen vote on the school budget. Um, I have looked at that and looked at other dates that we need to consider in Tuesday, June 13th is the recommended date for that vote. If you back that up, the state school state law says that you must have the school budget within 30 days of the council vote on the budget. So that's when we added Monday, May 15th as the actual vote on the school budget. Uh, when you back up, your regular meeting was already scheduled on Monday, May 8th. We would leave that as a budget budget public hearing, but again, the vote would be on the 15th, which again would give a week if there were any additional comments or, or uh, thoughts that the council wanted to, to think about before they voted on the 15th, and then again, the uh, school budget vote on the 13th of June. Um, also, that actually plays nicely. I just received um, notice from the state last Friday that there's a possible state bond referendum I'm not sure what it is, but there's a possible state we've been put on notice, and that would be the second Tuesday in June. That would be the 13th, and we also will have a special Portland Water District trustee election to fill the vacancy of, of Wayne Ross. Mr. Ross just passed away recently, and uh, the Water District trustees agreed to hold off that election until June. They could have said it at any time, um, but we're thankful that they held off in June uh, as well. So that. June 13th seems to be the date that's going to work for all those. So. When Deb and I were discussing this last week, um, I just 
re remember that we did the same thing last year, just in case anybody didn't remember, where we had our regular monthly meeting but had to have a special meeting for the vote too, so not out of the ordinary. So is there a motion to um, amend our schedule as was outlined by Deb? Sarah? Um, I move we amend our budget schedule for 2017 such that Monday, May 8th is a regular town council meeting and budget hearing. <clears throat> Monday, May 15th is a special town council meeting to vote on the 2018 budget. And Tuesday, June 13th would be the school budget election referendum. Thank you. Is there a second? Patty, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Great. Item number 42-2017, appointment to the Fort Williams Park Committee. Um, I'm looking to the appointments okay. committee chairperson. <laughs> 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 Out of blank there for a minute. That's who that was. I, I was, I was I blank. I think it was you, Patty. It's <laughs> not you. <laughs> so the appointments committee recommends uh, the appointment of Meg Baxter to fill on unexpired term at the, for the Fort Williams Park Committee. Um, her term would expire on 12-31-2018, uh, and her term would be effective immediately. This is because of an unexpected uh, resignation from a member of that committee after the appointments committee had finished their work. Great. Thank you. Is there a second? Jessica? Any discussion? And just to point out, in case anyone, um, Meg Baxter had gone through the appointments process and was appointed to the Library Committee, the Thomas Memorial Library Committee. Um, so as somebody that was familiar to the appointments committee um, and had uh, expressed an interest in the Fort Williams Park Committee as well, um, I'm excited that we have the opportunity to place her on this and that I know she'll, she'll serve that committee well. So if there's no other discussion, all those in favor? Great. Similarly, we will also seek out an appointment to the library committee. <laughs> um, item number 43-217, our draft 2017 goals. Um, I'll take this. Um, so before, um, before uh, Mike left uh, his day-to-day -day responsibilities, he and I were working on refining the goals um, attached in the packet um, was a draft of sort of where we got to following our previous um, working session in the workshop. Um, my recommendation is that we um, hold this over to our next workshop uh, next week um, to hammer it all out and come to an agreement and then we can look to put it on the February agenda for um, approving and, and moving forward. So I'm looking for a recommendation, uh, I'm looking for a motion to refer the 2017 draft goals to our January 17th workshop. So moved. Patty? Second, Penny, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Great, thank you very much. Um, item number 44-2017, uh, Spurwing School Reuse Committee Extension. I'll be happy to take this as well. Um, so, uh, and actually we're gonna need to amend this to include um, the Alternative Energy Committee. I'm just realizing that that's not captured here. Or to do an extension? Uh, we already did an extension. We approved it. To February? To, uh, You've done it to? To the end of, the committee um, has, um, it was extended to the end of January. Oh, okay. So technically the report can be time. delivered in February. Okay. So we, we're, we're going to make Great. our deadline. Okay. Um, the Spurwink School Reuse Committee um, is nearing the end of its work, but um, the holidays got in the way of our ability to meet and um, get everybody together. So um, in any case, uh, we're seeking an extension until February 13th um, to uh, finish all of our work, finish preparation of the report, and deliver that to the council. So can I have a motion to extend the term of the Spurwink School Reuse Committee? So moved. Thank you, Caitlin. Is there a second? I'll second that. Patty, thank you. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Thank you very much. Appreciate that personally as well. <laughs> um, <clears throat> next item is number 45-2017, appointment of the Registrar of Voters. Uh, we have a recommendation to reappoint Deborah M. Lane to serve as Registrar of Voters for a term to expire January 1, 2019, and until a successor is appointed and sworn. Anything you wanted to add to this? 
Uh, no other than it is a state requirement that in the odd years, as they uh, call them in January of the year, that uh, the registrar is appointed. Uh, and as I uh, outlined in my memo to you folks, that I will appoint deputies uh, as needed. Thank you, Deb. Is there a motion to reappoint Deb Lane as registrar of voters for a term to expire January 1, 2019? Jessica? I so move. Is there a second? Second. Kathy? All those in favor? Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Great. Congratulations, Deb. Thank you. <laughs> I think. Uh, <laughs> that concludes the regular portion of our agenda. There are no citizens here seeking uh, uh, comment to be made. So at this point, uh, I would first seek a motion to suspend the town council rules to take up an item not on the agenda. So moved. Second. Addy, seconded by Caitlin. Any discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. Secondly, I will seek a motion to enter into executive session pursuant to 1 MRSA statute 4056A to continue discussions relating to the contract and hiring of a new manager. Is there a motion? So moved. Caitlin, second? Second. Sarah, any discussion? All those in favor? Great, thank you very much. We are, we'll move into executive session. <laughs>